Welcome back to the James Coffey YouTube channel. My name is Gia. I'm here with Liz, the store manager of our North Park location, which is where we are today. Today we're doing a tutorial on the siphon. Liz has never done a siphon before, so it's going to be a good opportunity for us to kind of show someone who's never really used this equipment before. Today we're going to be using our Timor, which is one of our new single origin offerings that we have in the shops. Um, super delicious coffee. You can pretty much use any coffee that you like. It brews a cup of coffee, not unlike a pour over, but a little bit fuller body because of the amount of time the coffee is in contact with water. So what you need is a scale, some sort of heat source, your siphon, a large stir stick, coffee obviously, and uh, hot water. For this brew method, we're gonna keep with our same recipe that we've been using, a 15 to one ratio. Um, what's cool about the siphon or what makes it a little bit more, sometimes a little bit more useful is that you can brew more coffee at once with this. It's bigger than like what a V60 can do, for instance. Instead of doing 24 grams of coffee to 360 grams of water like we typically do for a pour over, we're actually gonna up that a little bit so we have 400 grams of water, um, which will up our coffee to 28 grams. So one of the cool things that the siphon comes with is this little plastic holder. It it not only keeps the filter from being dusty when you store it, but it also doubles as this little holder for when you're finished. Yeah. So similar to when you're making a V60 or an AeroPress, you want to wet your filter before you get started. In the case of a siphon, it's actually a cloth filter, so it's completely reusable. You definitely want to soak it completely before you get started so that one, it doesn't taste like last time's coffee, and two, so that the water, once it's heated, doesn't have any trouble passing through that filter. Um, once it's pre-wet, it makes it a lot easier. Before we get started with any heat, um, we're actually going to place our siphon right on our scale and we're going to weigh out our water first. We're going to put our siphon on the scale and zero out our scale, we're just gonna weigh out our water to 400 grams. So the water that you start with actually doesn't have to be hot. Um, we're gonna add heat, that's part of what makes the siphon a siphon. So you can use cold water, room temperature water. It'll just take a little longer for that water to boil, obviously. We're using hot water because we're in a cafe and we have it at the ready, but at home you can totally just use water like from a jug of water or from your filter in your fridge. The next step is gonna be to add our heat and we're gonna bring this water to a boil and it's actually gonna boil up and into this section of the uh, siphon. To make sure we're all set up here, we have our filter that we pre-wet. We just pull the little, it looks like a lampshade pull, all the way down and that's what locks it in place. It has a tiny little hook there and now our filter won't float around while the water's boiling. When you are ready to start using your siphon, you just wanna place this very gently. You don't need to like shove it in place. It just rests there. There's a rubber component there that creates a seal, so you don't have to worry about that. Um, don't like wiggle it into place. It's only gonna make it harder when you're done brewing to get it out. I made that mistake. Our next step is gonna be adding heat underneath our water to get it boiling up and into the top section of our brewer. So this is gonna take a minute. Um, you wanna wait until all of the water boils up to the top. There'll just be a tiny bit left at the bottom. So the ideal temperature that you want is between 190 to 200. Um, if it's getting too hot, you can always turn the heat source down. I'd recommend using a thermometer if you need to check. We pre-weigh out our coffee, so that's ready to go. It's ground just a little bit more fine than you would for a drip. So similar to how you would for a pour over or a V60. As soon as your coffee makes contact with your water, you're gonna start a timer. Boom, and you can just plop. What's cool about this brew method is it doesn't really require too much finesse, besides like the multiple glass components and the fancy burner. <laughs> you wanna make sure all your coffee is submerged, but you don't wanna to agitate too much right off the bat. We're gonna let that go for a minute and 10 seconds. You're gonna give it a good like 10 stirs, remove the heat and let all of that pass back through your filter, leaving your ground coffee up here and your brewed coffee underneath and that's it. These 10 stirs, you really wanna create a whirlpool. This is gonna leave you with a cute little mound of coffee when you're done. I'm gonna remove the heat. And because the heat source is removed, this is going to slowly cool and pass back down into the, basically down into the burner beneath. Once all of the water has passed back down through the filter, leaving your ground coffee up top and your batch down below, you can just remove the top, put it back in your handy dandy stand, and you're ready to drink. Be careful, it's hot. <laughs> I was really skeptical about pouring out of this, but it's become my favorite thing to pour out of. So just to recap kind of why we like this brew method or why we thought it would be fun to do a tutorial on it is, I mean, it's not very well known, or maybe it isn't as well known as some of the others that we're used to doing. It's pretty foolproof in terms of like the technique. You don't really have to be like a skilled barista or even really have a total like home bar setup. You can have just the siphon really and uh, some kind of burner and you're good to go. You don't need a special kettle or a special grinder or anything like that. It's also zero waste. So there's no paper component that you're throwing away each time. There's just that cloth filter, which is totally reusable. Uh, so that's also something that we like about it. And it just looks really cool sitting on the counter at home. <laughs> 
I would recommend this brew method for anyone who's just kind of tired of making V60s or AeroPress at home and wants something a little bit fun and funky. Also, if you really enjoy like a full bodied cup of coffee and you, but you still brew in small batches, this is a great way to get that. As you know, you can definitely get a full cup of coffee from a pour over or an AeroPress, but this is a really great option and it pretty easily serves too. So that's really nice. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching. Make sure you subscribe so you can see our next videos, like, and then leave a comment for which brew method you want to see next. <laughs> Today I'm here with Liz, our... <laughs> Wait, listen. No one can make coffee for the next 20 minutes. <laughs> Toilet water, <laughs> sink water, shower water. <laughs> Literally, you name it, you can do it in the siphon. <laughs> Imagine. I just... We're going tink and then we'll drink this. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Ha <laughs> <laughs>